Hey everybody, I suppose I should give a bit of a warning before this video. We're going to be talking about some controversial stuff and uh, some controversial people, so I'm not going to weigh in either direction on either one of them. That's not what this video is about. We're going to talk about one specific instance. That being said, let's all move on like adults. So, um, I saw the weirdest thing online the other day. Some A friend of mine called me what was going on, and I turned it, in, turned it on and was really blown away by what I had seen. So... Uh, Marvel artist Mark Brooks, this is an uh, example of his work here. This is one of the covers to the Judgment Day event that's going on during the right now at the time of the recording. So he is uh, one of Marvel's, he really is one of their main comic book artists, or uh, cover artists, I should say. He does covers for most of their big events or big storylines, or when they launch a new title, he'll do the cover number one, stuff like that. So. He doesn't do monthly books. He's not one of those. He's not a, a one of the artists that that actually does an entire book in a month. All he does is show up and do covers. So make of that what you will. Anyway, so he was on YouTube the other day and he got into a scrape up with uh, we'll, we'll just call it a scrape up. Why not with Ethan Van Skyver? Um, now Ethan Van Skyver, for those who don't know who he is, he was a comic book industry professional for many many years. He would primarily work for DC Comics. He was on a lot of high-profile storylines, uh, Green Lantern Rebirth, Sinestro Corps, a, a lot of a lot of stuff. Flash Rebirth he did, and um, he was like a, his contract didn't get picked up from DC Comics, and a lot of people suspect it's because it got out that he was a supporter of Trump back in 2016, and he makes no secret of that. He proudly talks about it, and uh, so he's ever since been on his own. Does not create her own series. He is a prominent member of the Comicsgate movement, which uh, a lot of people have strong feelings one way or the other about as well. We're not going to talk about them either. I've kind of made my opinion of Comicsgate known if you follow this channel, which is basically uh, the comic book industry, this industry that you know that we love and are passionate about. Uh, it's really too. I, I don't think we're big enough right now to be as fragmented as Comicsgate kind of makes people. Because uh, a lot of people like to draw lines in the sand. I'm either pro or against. I will not buy books from the other side. And, uh, you know, when the comic is as is as unhealthy as it is right now, I think we need more things that bring fandom together. I think a bridge needs to be found to put this whole comicscape fight to bed once and for all. But that's my opinion in, in a nutshell. And, and that's not what, what this video is about anyway. So uh, we're going to move over to Twitter. And we're going to talk about just one part of the exchange. So what happened was... Ethan Van Skyver and Mark Brooks were on a YouTube show together, and I don't know if they were debating or what they were doing, but it, it really, it eventually just kind of derailed into a really, really ugly exchange between these two guys, and there was a lot of below-the-belt uh, punches being thrown, and, you know, you know, metaphorically, as far as, you know, maybe personal attacks against each other and whatnot. Um, so it got ugly, it got ugly, but there's, one moment in the exchange that stood out to me and, and really, really just made my draw hit the floor. And that's the part we're going to look at here. So we're about to move over to Twitter. So I just got to say as a disclaimer, I know my community, uh, we're all good people. I, I don't probably, this probably isn't necessary, but just so we're all safe, don't go harassing people on Twitter. Don't, you know, go on these people and message them and, and say rude things or, or uh, decide you're going to be mean online, cyberbullying, all that stuff. Just leave people alone. So here we go. Let's, let's move over to Twitter. I've isolated just one moment in this video. Now, normally I don't do bad language on my on my channel, uh, but there is some there is some harsh language in this video. So, pardon the language. Uh, little ears can leave the room for this part. So, let's listen to this exchange. Now, uh, the lead up to this, like I said, the they've been going back and forth for a while. It's completely devolved and, and gone off the chain, and, and they're talking about uh, whether or not people are going to be attending New York Comic Con. So let's listen in. Do you believe that was Gabe, me? Like I would hide under a name. You, like Gabe, Shane, John, if you want to come see Boy. me in person, come see me. I'm going to assume if you're standing in front of me that I'm going to take all this weight I've gained and beat your fucking ass. So other than, other than that, stay the <laughs> fuck away from me. Shit. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Mark, you're a lunatic. You gotta I'm stop drinking. To you gotta stop drinking nose, sugar. Come see me, come see me coward. Come on, coward. You guys Mark, want I've to come right up to you, I, and I just you look you right coward. in the eye and I say, "Hey, come what's on, up, coward. Mark?" And you go, "Did you tell me to go fuck myself?" I said, yes. "Yeah, I guess I did." And you said, "Then we got nothing to talk about." And you, all right, that's enough of these two. Okay, so um, as you can see, it was an ugly exchange, but the part that really blew me away was the part when a professional illustrator 
working for Marvel Comics, representing Marvel Comics on YouTube in front of tens of thousands of people. I mean, probably over 100,000 people have seen this video by now because it's exploded. Uh, and also technically representing Disney, who owns Marvel, threatened to fight another industry professional at New York Comic Con, one of the biggest comic shows of the year. Wow, that really says something to me. Now, I'm thinking back, before I started doing comics and everything else, I worked in the world of finance. I did lending and uh, business loans, stuff like that. And if I would have just gone out to drinks with a couple friends after work, and I would have happened to have seen maybe somebody from one of the other uh, finance agencies sitting at the other end of the bar, and I would have shouted, "Hey, next time I see you at a trade event, next time I see you at a fundraiser, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw it down. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the crap out of you." I'd have been fired. Next morning, I would have gone into work. First thing that would have happened to me would I would have been brought into the manager's office and invited to clean out my desk because that is that's I'm, at the bare minimum. It's horribly hilariously unprofessional these are prof this is a professional illustrator and this is the way he's conducting himself in public in public this is worse than my example of just being out you know out to drinks or something this guy is on a video so not only is it being seen by tens of thousands of people but it's a video he's gonna live forever on the internet so forever as long as he's working for marvel or if eventually moves over to dc or whatever this is the way he's represented himself. Now, uh, at the time of this recording, as far as I can see, Marvel has not said or done anything about this. It's apparently they are perfectly fine with their employees threatening violence on the convention floor with other creators. That is out. Uh, that is outstandingly eye-opening about that company to me. While at the same time, I mean, if you're not going to let the guy go, because I understand. You know, he, he's been drawing their covers now. He's one of their, their bigger artists. So, I mean, what, what are you going to do? But at the same time, you, you've got to kind of do a little bit of self-examination and think to yourself, well, you know, just in case he wants to make good on this stupid, stupid threat he's made, he, they've at least got to scratch him from the show. I mean, he can't, you cannot allow him to attend New York Comic Con, and you cannot especially allow him to do it at your table. So if I were Marvel, that'd be the first phone call I would have made because I'm sure they heard about this video probably the day after it happened. And the first thing I'd have done if I was anyone in leadership there would have been to get him on the phone and say, yeah, you are scratched from the show. Don't even bother showing up at the airport. If you had your own artist alley table there, pull out. It is, it's done. We are, you are not going to show up at New York Comic Con as a Marvel employee um, and the way, with the way you conduct yourself on that video. Just because if anything, just for the liability of in case something happens, just for that. Just for that, I mean, you, you want to think that your employee wouldn't actually, you know, when it came to it, throw down blows to somebody else on the convention floor, but at the same time, he just threatened you that he would. So you've got to at least take him at his word and protect him from himself by keeping him away from the show. I mean, I, I don't think that Ethan Van Skyver is going to be at that show, but you never know. I, I don't know. But even if he's not, what if somebody who follows him on, on Facebook or is just a fan of his who saw this video shows up and starts to start a, decides to start a bunch of crap with Mark Brooks, I mean, he, he just showed he's unhinged. This dude's a hothead. He could, he could, who knows what this guy is going to do? Really, who knows? If you're somebody who, who will openly threaten on a live video to fight a person in a public event, especially a professional public event where you're attending as a professional, that's another level, in my opinion. As somebody who has spent most of my adult life in businesses where I have to go to trade shows and I have to go to marketing events, the thought of doing this before a marketing event is absolutely, absolutely flabbergasting to me. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe that Marvel has been silent about it. It speaks a lot of their company and how they run things. It, it speaks a lot as to why, you know, the industry is in the trouble that it is. And this is the caliber of your professionals. You know, I've been harsh when creators are rude to people on Facebook, when they are rude to uh, fans at conventions. I think it's unacceptable. I think it's terrible. I mean, you're... Whether, I know that we like to think of ourselves as just these like free artistic spirits when you're a comic book creator. I get it. I really do. But I mean, at the same time, at the end of the day, you're still a professional. You're still an employee. So just as, just as if you worked at a bank, if you worked at a grocery store, a, a if you sold furniture, sell cars, sell insurance, whatever your profession is, there's a level of professionalism you've got to maintain. I mean, think about it. think of your think of your job right now. Whatever it is you do for a living. Imagine if you were to go somewhere where you're representing yourself as a professional. This would 
This was a comic book. The, this is a comic book channel he was on. So he's there representing himself as a Marvel professional illustrator. So imagine for yourself if you represented your company and you acted like that. How long? Would, how much longer do you think you'd have your job? Seriously, how much longer do you think you'd have your job? And do you think? Could you imagine if your would your employer allow you to travel with the company to an event, knowing that you've threatened people at that event? I don't think so. I know I might no employer I ever worked for would have. That's insane to me. That's absolutely insane. I mean, good gosh. If if anything has ever shown that the indus that the American comic book industry is not dying because of if, if anything, it's not just loss of fandom, it's just a bunch of self-inflicted wounds. I mean, it's it's not being killed because print media is dying or anything. That's being killed is basically committing suicide. Whether it being because it's churning out inferior product or because the professionals, and I mean, look at the cover. This isn't bad artwork. One of the good professionals is out there just acting like a total jackass. What in the world is even happening? Seriously, that was the that was the one part that stood out to me the most about this video is him openly threatening violence against another comic book creator. And he, not only him, he, he you heard he gave a list. He talked about Gabe Altaib and... Anybody else, Shane Davis, I think, uh, was one of the names he was mentioning. So these aren't like low tier comic creators. These guys have, these are people who have been in the industry for a long time and most of them are guys with good reps. It's just, you know, they've, they've left mainstream and they're making money on their own and the comic skate audience is a way to do that. That, that so If you're going out on your own trying to produce your own comics, that is, that's an audience you're gonna look to tap. So they're gonna be friendly with that side of the aisle, whether you know, you like that or not, it, it just is. It's the, re it's the reality of the situation right now. So, I don't know. Um, I could be wrong. You know, I'm, I'm just here in my little corner of the universe, and all I can do is compare what I've just seen to my own life experience. My own life experience tells me that what he did would probably get him fired in literally any other company on the face of this planet. So, just about. Uh, Marvel... You are an exceptional beast if you're gonna let somebody be that unhinged in public and keep them on your payroll. That's all I can say. That's really all I can say. I mean, or at least, like I said, if you're gonna let him keep working for you, you need to keep this. You need to pull this guy from conventions. You cannot have him touring with your company, going around city to city, hoping that he doesn't run into somebody that he just disagrees with, and he doesn't just decide he's gonna go fight somebody on the floor of a convention in front of fans. Oh my gosh, this is what we've come to. So yeah. That was that was my thoughts on the Ethan Van Skyver, Mark Brooks affair. Um, let me know in the comments below what you thought. And I don't really, I'm not really too interested on your pro anti comics gate um, opinions. If you're pro, that's fine. If you're anti, that's fine. We all get along here. I really want to know. We just isolate this this particular instance and this kind of behavior. I want to know your guys' opinion on that. Um, if you were Marvel, what would you do? That's probably the best way to answer, ask this question. So let's talk about the comments below. While you're there, do all the usual YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Um, you know I'd love to have you here as part of the community. We talk comics, talk pop, uh, movies, video games, pretty much anything pop culture on the channel goes. So um, yeah, and uh, share this video also. It, it really helps the algorithm, helps get the channel just in front of more people. And um, you know, honestly, because just as somebody who is a probably as low down on the totem pole as you can get as a, of a comic book creator see somebody that high up just so so taking their position and what they've got for granted that they can act this much a fool online um i'm i'm more offended i'm pretty offended by it just me personally just because of that not because i'm offended because you know guys want to fight other guys that's fine i'm offended because he is so secure in his position that he, and he takes it so for granted that he acts that blatantly unprofessional in a public forum that's what blows me away about it it really is so um yeah that's really all i got to say so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there um i will talk to you on the next video i'm gonna get back to uh working on the video that was supposed to come out here for the end of this week and maybe i'll still try to get out by the end of the week if not uh it'll be on the near future and i will see you